Infantry Weapon Postcards, number 46. Yugoslavian and Serbian M77 rifles in 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO. The M76 in 8 millimeter Mauser. And then M91 in 7.62 by 54. Developed for export in the late 1970s, when 762 by 51 millimeter NATO battle rifles were still reigning supreme, the M77 series had the honor of being one of the first Kalashnikov rifles in a NATO caliber to reach serial production. Almost 50 years later, a version of it is still on the catalog. While there have been a few different models over the years, it was frozen in time for much of its production life. And because it's a related subject and didn't seem to fit anywhere else, first we're going to talk about the Yugoslavian M76 and 8mm Mauser. Then later we'll talk about the modern Serbian M91 in 7.62 by 54. First, to give some context, the M76. Intended as a sniper rifle, the M76 was chambered for 7.92 by 57 Mauser, also known as 8mm Mauser, and had semi-automatic-only fire control. It saw widespread use in the Yugoslav army as well as all the other countries after the breakup of Yugoslavia. View of the adjustable gas block which would also find its way onto the M77 series and other later rifles, as well as the unique furniture. The rear sight leaf out to 1,000 meters. The rifle stripped next of comparison shots of an M76 bolt carrier group and a standard M70 bolt carrier group. Then an M76 bolt with an M70 bolt. Internal views of the receiver as well as the trigger group. View of the reticle from the four power scope. Now on to the M77 in 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO. While the M77 wasn't an exact copy of the M76, the ancestry is clear. The original version of the M77 is with a milled receiver. This first version does not have the grenade launcher gas block. Note the export type selector markings of SAR, safe automatic repetition. A view of the adjustable gas block. The second version has the grenade launcher gas block. This rifle was photographed at an international arms dealer in Austria and was actually included in with the batch of 2013 dated M77B1s that will show up later. The naming on the gas block is for Automatska Pushka, Serbian for assault rifle. But also notice that it has semi-automatic only fire control. Like the best hookers, it does have a third hole, but rather than cost you an extra 50 euro, this one is intended for the safety seer. View of the grenade launcher gas block, which is beefier than the 7.62 by 39 millimeter version. Rear sight leaf, adjustable out to a very optimistic 1,000 meters. View of the trigger group internals. Notice that while a semi-automatic, it still has a safety sear and, for some strange reason, an AKM-style hammer retarder. Next, a stamped receiver version of the M77, also called the M77B1. The same naming system used for the 7.62 by 39 millimeter versions does not seem to apply to 7.62 by 51. Though dated 2013, made in modern Serbia, Production on the stamped version started much earlier in production. Dated 2013, but was ordered and delivered about five years later. It should be noted that stamped and milled production overlapped, and that the only difference in parts between the two is the receiver itself. I'm not sure if this was a factory option, or simply what Zostava felt like using at the time. This one does have the more modern bolt hold open selector, 
and still uses the same SAR selector markings. Over the years, Zostava has shown a couple different versions of the M77 rifle with folding stock. The top photo, stolen from their website 10 or 15 years ago, shows a milled receiver under folder. This is the only photo that I've ever seen of the rifle, so no idea if it was actually made or only on paper and a Photoshop creation. The bottom photo, taken at a trade show, shows what is labeled as the M77AB3. It is simply an M77B1 retrofitted with the stock that is most commonly used on the M21 series. That stock is a separate component easily retrofitted to most Zostava AKs. Next, we have this cool image that I found online when I was looking for pictures of your mom. This one is an M77 B1 stamped rifle, but retrofitted with a new modern rail system, chow hall defender grip, as well as an M4 style stock. Zostava does make one of these stocks as a factory item. One of the major end users of the M77 series was the National Guard of Cyprus. They seem to use a couple different versions of the rifle. Next, we have paratroopers from Mali in West Africa. But wait, there's more! Zostava also designed a light machine gun variant to go along with the M77 rifle, combining features of the M72 and the M77 together. Pushkam Itralyez is the nomenclature on the rear sight base. My apologies to any Serbians listening. A moment of silence for the murdered Serbian language. I don't have images of the stamped receiver version, but here is one from a trade show. It looks identical to the milled version, except for the receiver. And, for shits and giggles, here is a U.S. market semi-automatic version that I had about 15 years ago, imported by Mitchell Arms. The M77 series seems to have fallen off the current catalog, although Zostava does pump out versions for civilian sale. It has been superseded by the Model 05 series. This is the M77, but with improvements from the M21 series. They make a version with shorter barrel as well. Here are some images stolen from the catalog PDF. And I'll give you a few seconds to read it all. Finally, another descendant of the M77, the M91N, which is intended as a sniper rifle. And because it goes along with the subject, and because I was already stealing photos from the Zostava website anyway, we will look at the M76's replacement, the M91 and 7.62 by 54. The early version used a milled receiver and simply looks like an M76 in drag. SVD-related pun intended. The current version uses a stamped receiver and with plastic furniture, otherwise the same basic configuration. Zostava seems to have moved on to Belarusian optics. Also notice that the overall design seems to incorporate elements from the M76 as well as the M77. Till next time, dudes. Now, please consider watching some of my other videos. Or I will issue you the best 762 by 51 millimeter NATO battle rifle ever made, only to leave you without the ability to adjust the sights or mount a scope, defeating the whole purpose of it being in 7.62 by 51 in the first place.